Right, today I'm going to show you two different methods of inserting a clickable table of contents into Microsoft Word. Each method kind of has its own benefits and, and cons, and so you can kind of decide which works best for you. So the first one I'm going to show you is very similar to this, where you have the table of contents. I can control click on it and then it takes you down to the heading. The other way is going to be uh, using some of the built-in functionality and works handy if you're doing subheadings. So here's an unformatted version of that document. All right, so with the first method, you go down to the heading and you highlight it. And then you go to insert bookmark, name the bookmark, whatever you want it to be. I would recommend using the heading title. and then click add here. And now it created a bookmark for this place within the page. And then go up to that first link that I wanna use, highlight it, click link, and go to place in document. Usually by default, it's on web file. Hit place in document and you can see that bookmark is there. Hit okay, it's gonna now highlight it, control click, and it's gonna take me down to that point in the book. So I'm gonna do one more and then I'll show you the second one. So for section two or chapter two. So I'm down to chapter two, same thing. I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna go bookmark. I'm gonna name it. Notice what it's doing here is it's not letting me add. That's because you can't have any spaces. So I'm gonna remove the spaces. And now I hit that add button. It's gonna place it. I'm gonna jump back to the top. Highlight, insert, link, why this book, okay. Okay, for the second method, I don't even need to worry about this chapter section. That's the nice aspect of this one is because it does it for you automatically if you haven't already created it. So for this, what you just need to do is go to your title headings, right? And here under your home tab, you've got these which is basically some default settings. So when I select heading one, it automatically changes that to heading one. And you don't need to highlight it either. So if I just put the mouse right next to it and I go up to it and I say, say subheading two, notice it automatically defaults it to subheading two. You can change this. If you go into the styles, if you right click on them and go modify, it does give you the option of changing the text and the color. This is one of the reasons why I often don't use this method is because it requires changing your properties. But the advantage to this, so I've got an introduction, I've got a subheading, I've got heading one and heading two. And let's see, kiss, let's say why this book is gonna be my heading two, right? So let's run down to that really quick. And same thing, this is gonna be a heading, so I hit heading one. And you can do this throughout the entire book. And the nice thing about this is, of course, as you're writing the book, you're already setting your headings. So they're usually good to go. Okay, so I've got all my headings. And now I want to add my table of contents. All right, as mentioned, I don't have this scenario created. I just have tagged everything. So what I can do is go to Layout. Oops. Go to Reference. And you've got this option here, table of contents. So this is, it does it automatically for you. Click on table of contents. You can choose your style that you want. And I'm gonna go just with the first one. And notice what it did there. It did uh, pop up the page. So let's just get that out of the way. There we go. So notice what it did here is it automatically created that table of contents. It created the introduction. It automatically added the page number that it links to and it added that subtitle. So this is really handy for doing titles and subtitles. And another nice thing about this is let's go to the another chapter. Let's flag that as a heading. And let's jump back up to the top here what it does is it automatically updates. So if you click on it, you click update table, you, table, you should have two options, update page numbers only, update entire table. Well, we changed the title, so let's hit okay there. And notice now we've got that third title. You can click on this like you can in the other one. You just need to make sure you hit control and click on it. You see I get the little um, finger pointing and now I can click on it and go down to that introduction. So it's two methods. 
Uh, it just kind of depends. This one, you get some pre-formatting, you get the dots. So it just really depends on how you want your document to look. If you want it to look something like this, or if you want it to look something like this. And of course, you can change some of the default settings as well. You can customize the table if you need to, and you can customize the way the headings look. So uh, two methods, they kind of do the same thing. Take your pick, decide which one works best for you.